and welcome back to Let's Play River City Girls Zero on a brand new capture card, so hopefully this should run without any audio issues that uh, plague the first video. Now we are entering the alternate gameplay mode for this game, riding the motorcycle. You can ride it with any character, uh, Misako and Kyoko are just as well versed in riding bikes with uh, Ku as Kunio is. Uh, we will try to get every character on the bike at least once in this Let's Play. Riding on the bike is pretty straightforward. You press B to accelerate, press Y to brake. As you are driving along, you will have guys trying to kick you off your bikes or ram into you. This drains your health. This is not what you should be scared of. What you should be scared of is this. <laughs> yes, if you ram into the walls, it is an instant game over. I figured I should demo that right at the start, although I'm going to have plenty of opportunities to do this genuinely, particularly in the more difficult levels. There are three motorbiking sequences in the game, technically four, but only three of them are actual levels. Uh, these are sequences that are much easier if you have a second player, because the second player will be positioned on the back of the bike, and they can focus on kicking. When the driver kicks, you lose control of the turning on the bike, and if you're on a curve, you're going to start heading straight into a wall. So, yeah, try to avoid that. If you are on a curve, do not attempt to kick enemies. Uh, don't worry, they, uh, too, are aware they'll lose control and hit a wall. Uh, alternate ways you can deal with enemies is you can b bump into them to try and knock them into walls, but this is ill-advised because it puts you closer to walls, and it's, uh... Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, if you're veering towards a wall like that, hit the brakes. Uh, if you're closer to the center of the wall, you can just pump the brakes, or the center of the road. You can just pump the brakes to avoid crashing into the wall, but, uh, generally I just prefer to slam on the brake just to uh, give myself uh, the best control. There we go, we should be able to slow down. Now this first level does not have very many sharp turns. Uh, sharp turns are when the wall turns big and the road starts curving heavily. Uh, on sharp turns, you uh, go into the wall faster than you can correct yourself at max speed, so you want to be very careful about that. As you can see, the city skyline actually does change scenery as we go along the road. It's not just uh, a static image that's constantly rotating along. I think it's a really nice detail. Let's see, what else was I going to say here? Alright, so uh, for uh, two-player mode, like I said, the character will be riding on the back. For uh, Kyoko and Misako, they actually follow proper passenger procedure and actually hold on to the rider. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, for Kunio and Ricky, if they are on the rear, uh, they do this awkward thing where they uh, plant their hands on the back of the bike, which uh, does not seem very safe. Uh, I... Remember the 90s game, this was before the era where you could just say no homo. So uh, yeah, I wish I could show that off, but uh, I don't have a second player and I don't feel like setting up a second controller just to have a second player hanging out on the back. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is a sharp turn. When you start veering towards the wall very quickly, that means you're on a sharp turn. And you can kind of tell because the walls will start to raise up over the horizon a little bit. Oh, here's a tricky situation we're guessing is, as you can see, when he b bumps into us repeatedly, we lose a lot of health. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much unless you're already close to dead. When you're on the bike, though, and once you're close to your destination, the sign will show up. When you're on the bike, you cannot switch characters, so the health you have to work with is what you got. We are in Area 13, which is a warehouse area. Now, to, uh... There is actually a special gimmick to, uh, this specific dock area that we're, uh, on. And there are some guys lying in ambush. Uh, it's a bunch of Shinji clones. He's already been degraded to a Baw, or a regular enemy. So I'm going to take us over to the edge of the docks here. And this is a little risky, but I want to show it off. As you can see, there's water. Let's uh, knock this guy down, or yeah, let's... Uh, oh, man. Awkward range on that. Let's see if I can't stun these guys. Actually... Oh, never mind. He was uh, on the wrong side. Come on, let me slap you. Oh, dear. What I'm trying to do is you can knock these guys into the water to kill them instantly. Unfortunately, it's not really working out like I'd hope. Especially since Kyoko keeps getting up on the wrong side, so I can't knock him towards. I want to hit at least one of these guys into the water. Come on. Slap this guy. Get him in the hit stuff. Dang. I was uh, going too fast there. Yeah, on the wrong side. There we go. Oh, no. Kyoko doesn't launch far enough. We're going to need Kunio for this. There we go, and if you knock them into the water, they die instantly. Kunio is the best for this because his spin kick, as you can see, has very considerable launching power. It sends enemies all the way to the edge of the screen. 
It's very handy if you need to get guys off of you, and it's a very uh, great get-up maneuver. Like so. Just make sure you're holding the block when you go for it. Sometimes I'm not holding the block properly. We'll just take this guy out the standard way. These guys are very vulnerable to grounded pummel loops. Uh, I obviously screwed it up there. Let's just take this guy down. Keep pummeling him. Uh, the shove that enemies do to you does very light damage, but honestly, it's worth it for the amount of damage you can get off of pummel guards, or grounded pummels, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Heading into the warehouse proper, we've got more Shinji clones. And yeah, we're going to be seeing these guys fairly frequently throughout this warehouse. Uh, like uh, in uh, Hanazono High, uh, that hook up there you can grab and start doing some awkward uh, kicks while you're hanging along it. And in this case, it'll actually uh, drag you along. I like doing, uh, getting the enemies into stun and then doing a spin kick since that just does a ton of damage. Of course, sometimes they'll break out of your punch combos. I'm not too worried if I have to switch off of Kunio. The main people, the main characters that I want to have uh, ready to go at the end of any stage are Ricky and Kyoko because of their rapid attacks that just have great range, great damage too. Oh, giving some knees to the crotch there. Let's get this guy. Oh, never mind. Going straight for the grounded pummel. And yeah, as you can see, sometimes they'll try and shove you out of it, but it's easy to loop them. Yeah, once we finish up in this area, I'll probably switch to Misako. Oh, yeah, that hitbox on that, not nearly as big as it looks. It's kind of frustrating, actually. Makes the move a lot less useful than it would be otherwise. There we go. Actually went pretty good. Yeah, let's just jump kick that down. Grounded pummel. Uh, if I can... Okay. Yeah, as you can see, we got him into a very long loop there. Come on, let's uh, grab the hook here. Just flip ourselves around. Oh, actually, it does not. And I can't reorient myself. Ah, uh, I actually didn't play around with that at all. I thought it dragged you along. Oh, well. Alright, let's get this guy into a grounded pummel. Okay, there we go. Gonna switch to Misako now. Kunio took a beating there. And heading into the next section of the warehouse, as soon as Misako wants to run through it. <laughs> This upcoming section is fairly straightforward. Uh, we're going to be doing some light platforming, nothing that we can die over. Ah, jeez. And we've got to fight these guys in the boxes. This is actually pretty annoying, because these guys are a little difficult to approach. Let's just do a flying knee here. Oh, caught myself trying to do a pummel, ground pummel there, but uh, Misako and Kyoko cannot do that. Also, forgetting all of Misako's moves. Uh, I've been a little busy with stuff recently, so I haven't been able to practice this as much as I'd like to, but hopefully we'll do okay. Now, yeah, here's where it gets really annoying. The guy just camps out the ledge. It's actually not that bad that he did the jump kick there. I, uh, once again, meant to do the spin kick there, but, uh... There we go. Uh, Misako's spin kick actually does do pretty good damage, uh, pretty comparable to uh, Kunio's actually. And as you can see, you can just kind of loop the enemies on get up there. You do have to be careful with the timing, sometimes they'll get up and start immediately launching punches. Okay, good, that guy just stayed there. Yeah, we'll send him across. That one actually does have the launching power of uh, Kunio's spin, so it's pretty good like that. Alright, do one stomp. And once they're uh, kind of crouching, that's when you want to do the kick. I was a little off on my positioning there. Oh, yeah, and he got up at the end of the attack there, so it didn't hit him. It's not the end of the world that we got sent to the bottom here. I think one more guy shows up after you kill the rest of them. Or no? Oh, no, nope, there he is. Yeah, they appear on any box that you're not looking at, I suppose. Oh, I actually wanted to send him forward. Get up is much different in this game than it is in <laughs> River City Girls Zero, which I guess makes sense since that game came out many, many years after this one. Did I say River City Girls Zero? I meant River City Girls. Vanilla. River City Girls 1? I guess. Alright, with that taken care of, that's all the guys we need to take out. Not as bad as the Ferris wheel as far as making us double back. We can climb up this ladder here. Go for it, Misako. And here is the door we need. As soon as it decides... Yeah, there are some areas where you have to walk all the way to the right, even though the way you're supposed to go forward is, like, right in front of you. That's actually going to be coming up in this uh, area coming up also. Ooh, let's get the hooks. There we go. And let's just uh, let these guys run into us. There we go. Oh, wow, that does tons of damage. That took that guy out in two hits. Wow, I, I didn't realize that was such good damage. Well... 
I'm still learning new tech for this game. All right. And it kind of functions as like a dodge. Wow, this is way better than I thought it was. All right. Hey, come on, buddy. My feet are flying out here. Come on. Come on. Give the toes a kiss. Yes, that's a little disturbing, I realize. All right. Wow. Okay, so hanging down. Uh, that's actually a very valid strategy. Grappler Baki did not lie to me. And again, this is a situation where you have to walk all the way to the right, and then you'll get on the elevator. A little silly, a little silly. And here's Shinji, uh, at the bottom of his army of clones. Yeah, oof is a good word to say. If you're ever feeling, uh, kind of stressed out or just got hit by something bad, just go oof. And we're going to switch to Kyoko, since, uh, she... Was already a little damaged. We'll let her uh, health bar burn out. And this uh, fight is very straightforward. Uh, we just want... It's actually pretty much identical to the previous fight with him. We just want him to run at us and we'll hit him with rapid kicks. Or, uh, you know, with those... Okay, that was a little uh, dumb of me. Shinji still has... Compared to his clones, Shinji, of course, has invincibility frames on get up, so we want to be careful there. Oh dear. Let's uh, do a slap as we get up. Nope, range is way too short on that. Ooh, okay, yeah, definitely switch to Ricky there. Do as uh, short as you can to get that guy off of us. And just a basic drop kick. Now we just want to back up, let him run at us. Oop, ah, screwing this up really bad. I'm a little thrown off here. Uh, I should g give myself more distance so that he actually runs. There we go. It all goes like this. There we go. Come at me. There we go. But yeah, pretty similar fight altogether, just uh, on a 2D plane now, so you gotta make sure your spacing is a little bit more tight. You can't get past him on the vertical axis. As you can see, his attacks do tons of damage, so if you are trying to fight him fairly, so to speak, uh, you will take tons of damage, and at low health, it's just so easy to die. I definitely recommend uh, going for the loops there. Yeah, he's got Kunio's Spin Kick. If you get hit by that, it does a ton of damage, like a third of your life bar, so be very careful of that. Kind of wish we had the hook here. Uh, this would uh, do very well. Uh, this would do very well with the good damage that does. But yeah, boss is very durable in this game, so you gotta be prepared for them. <laughs> I was trying to dash there, but of course I screwed up the input. Uh, let's go. Yeah, I should just go for one stomp, really. There we go. All right, not too difficult. A uh, little bit tricky because of the strictly 2D movement, but we got him. We got him. Yeah, come on, Shinji. We know you know. Oh, you've got to know something. Oh, man, Ricky is hardcore. Hmm. Eh, ah, tough talk, tough talk. But we've hit a dead end. We don't know where to go at this point. Well, ah, if only we had some leads. Well, what do you guys think we should do at this point? Oh no, Takayama! Wait a minute, why is Mamoru with him? Mamoru... Or, uh, I keep forgetting his name. Is it Mamoru or Mamoru? Ah, looks like he's done his detective work. Ah, Sabu. Now, Sabu is the final boss of Renegade, so to speak, and he is a big-time Yakuza inside uh, the River City universe. <laughs> Very Kyoko-esque response there. Bomb, bomb, bomb! What? Twin brother? Two Kunios? <laughs> Misako is excited at the prospect. Kunio is, of course, incredulous, because you'd think he'd know if he had a brother, especially a twin one. Is Kunio adopted? <laughs> you know, this seems kind of like a hole in the story of Ken's. 
I'm kind of with Kunio here. This seems, uh, this seems pretty suspect. He does seem to have, uh, some genuine resentment. Oh, dear. Mamo Drew, there we go. Okay, okay. Looks like Sabu, uh, wanted a, what should we say, successor here. Alright! Rapangi Disco, okay, we can get there. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, how could he? It's not in the blood. Yeah, we got more people to beat up, <laughs> handsome jerk. Kyoko's ready to get down. She had all those dance-themed moves in River City Girls, so it makes sense to me. Heading back out to the entrance of Area 13, we're going to get to our bike. Let's uh, have Misako take the handlebars this time. Heading out, we've already got another bike level. This one so quickly after the first one. Now, this one is a bit different from the previous one. There's going to be a lot more sharp turns to worry about. However, it's also a lot shorter. Uh, in fact, uh, the first bike level is by far the longest one, likely to give you an opportunity to get acclimated to how it works. Uh, the following bike levels are much shorter, but they have may many, many more sharp turns to worry about, so you have to be much more mindful of the uh, thugs uh, coming at you. And I generally, just to hedge your bets, it's always a good idea to assume any turn you're coming up against is a sharp turn, just to avoid any problems. As you can see, if you aren't able to kick these guys on the straightaway, they can be a very big hassle when you're uh, coming up on the turns. Alright, see if I can't... oh jeez. And yeah, like I said, assume every turn's just a sharp one on these levels, otherwise you will very quickly find yourself crashing into a wall. And some of these go on for a while, so you do have to really monitor your speed. <clears throat> Come on, let's get to... ah jeez, having horrible luck getting this guy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And there is no problem when you're on the straightaways just spamming kicks until they run into them. You know, it's funny, before I started recording, I was thinking, man, it would be interesting uh, if you, like, had to dodge cars while you were weaving along the highway here. And then after thinking about it for, like, literally half a second, I was like, no, wait a second, that actually sounds really annoying. I'm glad they did it like this instead. It reminded me a lot of the pizza delivery minigame in No More Heroes 2, actually. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That was too close. I was kind of in my own little world there, thinking about pizza delivery. But we should be getting close to the end at this point. Alright, and yes, there we go. Like I said, the levels after the first bike level, very, very short in comparison. L roughly half the length. Just a lot more turns to worry about, and definitely combating the other uh, bikers on the highway can be pretty uh, difficult to deal with. Coming here at the coffee house. Who are these two clowns? Why, yes I am, Lisa. Yeah boy, here comes Joe. He's looking to get paid. Ah, don't count don't count on it, buddy. Alright, so here we've got Lisa and Joe. Joe wants to smash her face in, Lisa is looking the terrace apart. Uh, this is kind of a weird fight. Uh, Joe is kind of hard to approach. Lisa is not that different from a regular enemy. In fact, she's basically just a moveset clone of uh, Misako and Kyoko, so any uh, strategies you use against regular enemies kind of work just fine against her. We'll take out Lisa first, just because she's the easier to deal with. Luckily, she is pretty dumb. And we can loop those spin kicks on her. Joe has invincibility frames on getup, so uh, he is not susceptible to loop, so be mindful of that. Oh, dear. Yeah, he's got that nice three-hit combo there. And Lisa should be close to dead. Resilient, resilient. Get her a nice little loop there. 
Yeah, I kind of dropped it there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm zoning out a bit. Uh, okay, Lisa, ah, come on. Let me give you some slaps here. Return the favor. I do have to admit, I really love the slapping sound effect in this game. It is uh, quite good. All right, we're gonna switch over to Kunio now. Boom. Yeah, do that. Ah, I meant to do a spin kick there. That probably would have taken her out, honestly. You actually can do grounded pummels on her. That takes her out. Female uh, enemies have a unique death scream. Now we can just focus on Joe. Let's uh, just get up to him, do a basic three punch combo. Like so many other characters, Joe, it's best to approach him on the diagonals. Uh, he is immune, like most bosses, he is immune to ground pummels, so don't even bother trying that. Uh, we're just going to, again, approach him diagonally as Kunio and try to get him in stun lock so that we can do a spin kick on him. Yeah, Kunio definitely, uh, the best way to play him is to set up for those spin kicks just because it does so much damage. Yeah, I kind of screwed up the timing there. But hey, two stomps, not bad. Close enough to uh, the damage. Again, uh, another boring but effective way to deal with Joe is to just let him walk into you as Ricky and Kyoko and do your rapid attacks. Hmm, Kinji, what the heck is that? And we're at Disco All Manic. It's like a combination between Almanac and Manic. Pretty cool. Probably another boss character. Oh yeah, give him a warm welcome. Let's head on in. But we're not actually going to fight Kinji at this particular moment. We're going to save and quit here. So that will be it for this video. Next time we'll take on Kinji and see if we can't get an actual lead on Ken. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope to see you next time. Until then, goodbye.